Man, as a Louisville fan, it was so hard trying to get tickets to the Louisville Kentucky game. I know it happens every year, but it's so hard to get tickets. It should not be that hard to get a ticket to support your team and be a true fan. And with game time, that problem is no longer an issue. Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fastest, easy way to get your tickets to the next big event and the price is guaranteed. So go ahead and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. So download the game time at make account, use promo code club520 and get $20 off. Sign up. And while you at it, go ahead and use the promo code CLUB520 for $20 off your first purchase on the app. Don't forget, use CLUB520 for the promo code. You get that $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Subscribe to our YouTube, CLUB520. Uh, we clowning on that mother. Just hit the button. <laughs> God. Don't ask more questions. Subscribe. <laughs> Hey, we appreciate y'all rocking with us, Club 520 Live in Indianapolis. We at the crib. We appreciate y'all pulling up to the amp. We appreciate y'all having us in Nova Wings. Appreciate y'all with the wonderful spread. Check out all the food vendors once the show is over. Shout out to the bartenders. Make sure y'all tip the bartenders. The 520 drink be here. What's in there, man? You got, uh, goddamn, I done forgot. Goddamn. Red Bull, Pineapple. That's a great advertisement. Casamigos, Rep, and that's it. Hennessy, man. Henny. Shake it, pour it, mix it. <laughs> what are y'all doing? <laughs> he asked what was in the drink. What are you doing, bro? Come on, bro. Let's Shout out to Hennessy. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> we ain't going to never go corporate. <laughs> fuck would be here. Hey, but we appreciate y'all pulling up Club 520 Podcast. I'm the host. My name is DJ Wells. We got a special guest to my left. Legend, legend, legend in the city. Introduce my man's last to my far left. My dog, Bishop B. Hen, out the pearlies. How you what, nasty? Cool and nasty. Let's get to it, baby. I see you got your work shoes on. Every time we go out of town, you don't never wear black forces. They say you, you be pump faking. Nah, we back at it today for the city. Out the gate to my right, my dog, Young Nacho, Young Tig, how you what? Man, I'm chilling, bro. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad everybody came rock with us. I see all my partners in the crowd, so that's cool. The forces weak as fuck, though. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a bean. I'm weak, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Introduce before I get on his ass, bro. <laughs> your rag on your head. All right, you know what? Let's go. Now, you, are you out of pocket? You real comfortable today. You at home. Let me be me. <laughs> Damn, you about to start making me cuss on this motherfucker. <laughs> you always do that. DJ, introduce this nigga so we can go with the show. <laughs> hey, man, we got a legend from the east side of Indianapolis. Number one pick, you know what I'm saying? Legend, 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 Mr. Greg Oden. How you doing, sir? Appreciate you pulling up the 520, my boy. I'm good. I'm good, fellas. Appreciate y'all for having me up here. Everybody appreciate y'all coming out. Now, we got to tell the people, we had Udonis Haslam on our podcast. You know what I'm saying? He said he knew about Indianapolis because of you. He was scared of the east side. Cause you had him in Miami drinking Patrinacy. Yeah, I learned that shit on the West Coast. Damn. When I was drinking here, I was drinking Terre Haute, Indiana. Whoa, I mean, Excuse you was me, drinking right? meth. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga had a straight cup of Breaking Bad. <laughs> that boy was out there moving, moving and shaking poor, wasn't he? Hey, man, that was my people. When I first moved here, uh, I moved to Terre Haute when I moved from Buffalo, New York in the fourth grade. So I grew up there. I didn't come to Indy till eighth grade. For sure. But how did you, like, how would you make you down as Haslam, you know what I'm saying? Because that's a, that's a strong nigga. We done met him. He, he look like he do a lot of shit in his spare time. How did you make a nigga like that, like, lead a club off the paternity? That shit is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's it as simple as that. That shit is nasty. But it's strong as fuck. And at that time, I just like to get fucked up and quick, so. That's what it was. Yeah, I see your method. <laughs> It'll do that to you. When you start drinking that, though, when you got drafted? Uh, uh, nah. Before that? High school, high school. I had, oh, I had wow. a, a nice getaway in high school. I knew y'all East Siders was crazy, boy. <laughs> we ain't do none of that out west, did we? <laughs> y'all still partying together right now. <laughs> I see y'all tonight at All Stars. Uh, <laughs> shout out to my <laughs> west side, nigga. <laughs> but now I got a question, so. Growing up, I seen you, man. You was in seventh grade. I seen you at Craig Middle School. Mm -hmm. You wasn't the number one pick in seventh grade. I tell you that. <laughs> I was like, man, this dude is tall. We seen you playing for Indy Heat. You weren't playing as much. Like, when did basketball start picking up for you? Like, when you seen it, like the difference? Actually, it was the summer after seventh grade. Okay. Um, you know, I, I grew up in a boys and girls club. So uh, while my mom worked late nights, I was just in there hooping and. Uh, Seventh grade, I dunked the basketball and said, why don't I just do this? It's easy. 
Yeah. And that's when everything started looking up for me. So. How tall was you then? Six seven. God damn. Yeah, 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 mama, At 12? Your mama better didn't have a chance. But. <laughs> she yeah. had to walk around with my birth certificate when we went to AAU tournaments. I but believe. Like fifth grade, end of fifth grade, I got to like 5'11", and by the end of sixth grade, I was 6'6". Six, six. Trash. What size shoe was you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> what, what size shoes? Uh, right now, we're at 19. No, nah, I mean. <laughs> God, <laughs> fuck. Pause. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, I'm talking about in six, fifth, fifth, sixth grade. Uh, shit. <laughs> Nigga, Probably where? like 13. Ooh, yeah. Motherfuckers <laughs> been in trouble with your house. <laughs> 13, <laughs> boy. You want to get no Jordans, nothing. Well, you had to play the full I price. can barely get them joints now. I already know. That's crazy. But like you said, everything clicked for you got a little bit taller. Once you got to high school, like you honestly had one of the best high school basketball careers of all time. Like yeah. it pains me to say this. Shout out to Ellen, y'all went crazy. Shout out to Mike, still going crazy right now. How was that going into that school? You know what I'm saying? You clicked up with your boy, y'all was already nice. And y'all just dominated all through high school. Well shit, he was nice. I mean, I'm, he was on the front of a, like Sports Illustrated for kids when he was in the, the second and third grade. Um, so just playing with, with Mike, I mean, it was easy. Like, you know, everybody think that I, I did something. I might have did a little bit, but nah. he was the type of point guard that, you know, put you in your right spots. He made everybody on the court better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, after that uh, blunder our freshman year, we, we finally, it finally clicked. And, uh, yeah, we got three state championships, that's all I got to say. <clears throat> Like seeing Mike still playing right now, what does that like? What does that do for you? Like me watching him still play, I'm like, dang, boy, he been playing. He been great since we were in second grade, like you said, and he's still Crazy. killing. Yeah. And I'm like, it's amazing to see. What are you in, like year 17? Yeah, year yeah. 17. Special man. I mean, I'm happy for him, man. Yeah. You know, like shit, I can barely walk down these stairs without my knee hurting. So <laughs> just me too, <laughs> boy. <laughs> just to see some guys out there that's our age, you know, still going out there and balling, playing at the highest level. Um, and I, I, I want him to win a championship. You know, he yeah. deserves it. He's been playing good basketball for a long time. No, so. that's a fact. Yeah. I kind of don't want him to, though. I kind of <laughs> like being the only one. Is that because it's your ex team? No, nah, it's not like I'm the only one that won. So it's like, cool, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm hating. Here's to be, yeah, you are. Here's to be a I'm little hating. bit more meaningful, though. <laughs> Why are they going to have an after party? Nah, because he played. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> It be, nah, no Monday it be your guy, but <laughs> it be your guy. That's why I don't eat his food. <laughs> I don't like diarrhea, but anyway. What's crazy? How did y'all meet, though? How did you and Mike uh, meet up? So, uh, I guess uh, his dad got wind of me when I was living in Terre Haute at the time, and uh, the speech team pulled up when they were Riverside. Yeah, and uh, they all drove down. I want to say it was like uh, seven or eight of them. It was Mike, Curtis White, Reese Cheatham, Devin Williams. A little shout out to Devin Williams. I had to get my hair with the straight backs. Oh, Remember right. my guy, yeah. Devin, and you, early career. I don't tell nobody about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, they all pulled up with uh, Coach Mike Conley, and um, they came, knocked on my door. Seven black kids my age asking to speak to me, asked me if I wanted to play basketball. And I looked at all them right behind my mom and was like, it's Saturday. I'm watching cartoons. Damn. And then went back in the house. And then that following week, they got me out to play in the men's league. You know, the Riverside teams used to play in the men's league. And since then, I want to say that was sixth grade. Me and Mike Conley played basically every game together from sixth grade till we got drafted in the league. Damn. That's crazy. And we're going to talk about y'all going to school, to college together. But I got to talk about y'all in high school because y'all had some battles on the low. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we never beat them. We never beat them. They, they yeah. always beat us by five or six points. I remember one time we played y'all. It might have been my junior year. I think it might have been your senior year. Uh, we played at LN. I went to the basket. It's the first time. I knew I couldn't beat your ass, but <laughs> I was like going to have all my West Side homies. They in the crowd, too. I was going to tell them, like, we're going to beat his ass. We're going to figure this shit out. But uh, now I went to the basket, and you blocked the shot, and you pointed at my temple and said, what the fuck are you thinking? And ever since then, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what the fuck was you thinking? <laughs> Honestly, I want to say after, like, so after sophomore year, so junior and senior year of high school, 
I found the energy drink boost. Okay. And I used to drink like two or three of them before the game. And oh, I swear damn. to God, I don't remember nothing. <laughs> I don't remember none of that. So I apologize to my brother. <laughs> no, sorry, but I dude. remember like there was a couple of games I used to dunk. And it would be like some, they will call a foul and it will just be like three around. I will just be like. <laughs> like I was, I was on some shit. Back that shit was tough. <laughs> you was damn near a dope in high school. <laughs> three energy drinks per game. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, you remember them? Uh, what was it regional days at Hinkle? You yeah. had to get two games, one in the morning, that morning one in the yeah. man. Yeah, Figured we that shit out. And next thing I know, we played y'all every morning and lost every time. <laughs> Besides uh, freshman year, which uh, oh yeah, that, shout that, out to Courtney that, and that that Lee. Yeah. Uh, that hurts me very much. Yeah, I'm glad they got y'all because nobody else. But <laughs> who was your toughest you know. matchup in high school that you can remember? Uh, Josh McRoberts, of course. Legend. Yeah, um, he was nice. That's my guy. Uh, but the school was Arlington. For um, us. not them nights. Look at Bubby. Yeah. Any we got one in the crowd. Yeah. Any of yeah. <laughs> they yeah, couldn't read or write. It was Arlington, man. I want to say it was like. It might have been junior or sophomore year. Uh, <laughs> junior. junior year? Oh, okay, so we he got played. one win. <laughs> he calling it out. Get your ass hey, we I played them. Celebrate. We played them in the the second round of sectionals. It was either the second. Yeah, y'all played them at three. LC. Yeah, that was the state championship. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Was that, <laughs> yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Y'all talk about it was no. number one versus no, number two. No, that was a Second sectional round. game. Hold on, nigga. No, that was He's saying they were the best teams. Oh, yes. okay. I got you. Yes, that was a state championship. We would have beat Arlington ass, though. Mm. Y'all would have. Yeah, we would have dogged them. They weren't smart enough. I ain't going to do that to my niggas. Chill, it, chill out. Oh, but my fault. You're right. My fault. Y'all was a better shout team. Shout out to though. B. Shout out to Buck. But, but you had, they was cheating for you, though, and then when y'all played them in that sectional game. You what had like 18, 19 blocks, bro. You was goaltender like a motherfucker. You said niggas go. <laughs> and I'm glad you're here so I can tell you about yourself. <laughs> and your cheating ass coach. And y'all paid them motherfucker refs. So shout out to my niggas at Arlington because y'all was really supposed to lose that motherfucker. But we can keep on with this. He just with the IPS, bro. Yeah. This is my IPS shit. <laughs> you feel me? Girl, that's been sitting his, his school don't while. exist no like, more. Oh, we we, shout we out still won, though. So he can talk about all the <laughs> shit he wants to. We still won. That's when I knew basketball was rigged. I'm like, man, I hope this nigga tears ACL. God damn. But damn. see, nah, I was that back then. I was Hold on, that back so then. you mean I got you to blame for all my shit? Nah, that's that's the motherfucking power drinks, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> and Lamar Odom it. pregame, crazy. That was a crazy game. Nah, Lamar Odom did something different. For I ain't gonna come compare him to Lamar Odom. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. They, they be trying to do that in front of my daughter. They be like, Lamar Odom. My wife be like, hell no. Like, don't do me like that. <laughs> Nah, I had to get that off my chest, nigga. I was saving that. Nah, he was. Yeah, that was shit. RP to IPS school system. Nah, for sure. Nah, but I will say in high school, that was probably our best games because they, they would get us during the regular season and then we would beat y'all and <laughs> when the sectionals, you know. So. Respect, respect, respect. Even though you only beat us like once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. you got, they living on that. <laughs> Bro, I get texts every month. <laughs> our team was the best team in the month state. <laughs> he over there. His name Bubby. Shout out to Bubby. <laughs> they was number one, though. They held Look, it. They was. They was. Without a ball, it's just a court. Without your spirit, it's only a game. So together with the fans, we bring our best. Hennessy is excited to celebrate the intersection of basketball with art, music, and fashion. Each of these elements of culture represent ways that fans, players, supporters pay homage to the game, both on and off the court. Hennessy and Mitchell and us have come together for the ultimate drop, a limited edition collection to mark their shared love for basketball culture and to celebrate Hennessy's continued partnership with the league. The exclusive collection will have a limited drop available for both in retail and online and will be featured on the Hennessy Arena Tour, making stops in San Francisco, Saturday, March 9th, Dallas, Sunday, March 17th, Atlanta, Saturday, March 30th. Come see Club 520 Podcast taped live in each city. For your next pregame, let's share a twist on the classic, the Hennessy Margarita. A squeeze of fresh lime juice. And a bit of agave syrup. Top it off with some ice and a salsa rim. Mix it, shake it, pour. And enjoy the spirit of the NBA. Hennessy. Without your spirit, it's only a game. 21 and over only. Please drink responsibly. But you went crazy in high school, you know what I'm saying? How was that decision to go to Ohio State? And I wonder what that decision would be now with NIL. <laughs> well, the decision would have been the same. 
Mm. But I would have been getting paid just as much as quarterback at this time. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. no NIL is, is crazy. And I think I was talking to Jeff earlier about that, just the type of talent that's getting <laughs> the 500,000, the millions, sometimes you'd be like, well, damn, what would we would have got? Like, you when's somebody going to sue so we can get our shit back? But. Shit, I can't wait. <laughs> well, look, you would have got five million off top. Man, you was the best player in the nation. Easy you was money. a generational talent. Like, it wasn't too many people walking around like you. You was jumping 40, you had a 40-foot inch vertical, whatever it was, 40-inch 40 vertical. Inch I said vertical. foot, pause. You got a 40-inch vertical. Like, you was going crazy. Like, nobody in the world was like you at that time. You would have got five million dollars easy. That's easy. on the low end. On the easy, bro. I would have took it. Five mil after taxes. I mean, you already got that anyway when you went to Ohio State. We ain't going to talk about it. I know the Ooh. truth. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Damn, no, I, I, I do got to tell this story because this hit a nerve. Because <laughs> I remember one time I was in the locker room. I was talking to Brandon Roy and LaMarcus. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I ain't get paid. All I got was Pell Grant at Ohio State. Shout out to Coach Mata. He do everything the right way. But I was able to get Pell Grant. So that's my little thousand every couple of weeks. Mm. Man, these fools laughed in my face. Like, belly laughed hard when I said I didn't get paid in school. I would have laughed at you, too. Oh, man. I, I got know paid. Marcus got paid. How much Texas. you got? <laughs> Shout out to Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn, when after that freshman year, oh, my mama was straight. <laughs> you only got 1000 at Ohio State? Mm -hmm. I just got Pell Grant, man. Damn. I didn't get paid. Stay yeah. out of pocket. You got to talk to Evan Turner. <laughs> oh, nah. So... <laughs> I remember the story. We ran into this little runner back in the day. It was like Asians trying to get guys. And uh, one night, gave me $100. Anything, you know, I'll take care of you. The next day, Jim Jackson comes and talks to the Ohio State basketball team. He's talked to us for 30 minutes and ends on the, you know, if you do everything the right way for Ohio State, the Buckeye faithful will love you for life. Man, I had to give, go back and get that man that hundred dollars. Man, I did. I really did. I did not take any money while I was at the Ohio State University. You a damn None fool. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody give a fuck about that hundred dollars, nigga. Fuck Jim hey. Jackson. <laughs> well, back then they did. Speech, nigga, you was getting a thousand dollars every six months. Hey. <laughs> you needed that honey bun. <laughs> he was like, That's <laughs> actually what I lived off of before the draft. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, nah, man, it's, it's at that time, you know, you, you couldn't get none. In Ohio State, you know, with the Maurice Claret stuff, it, it was just, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's it, right. It was, it was everything was on, so you just had to do stuff the right way. And You're right. Maurice mm -hmm. fucked it up for y'all. For sure. And that year you was there, you know what I'm saying, y'all went crazy. In particular, you went crazy, and you had to play without your dominant hand. That's like one of the most amazing feats in basketball that don't get spoken enough, that you dominated college basketball with your off hand. Respect, bro. I appreciate that. No, nah, that was crazy. No, nah, you was killing, bro. Like, nah, it's amazing that you were shooting free throws with your left hand at seven foot. You know, big guys struggle at the free throw line. And for you to be able to switch hands to do that, that was crazy. It wasn't that crazy to me. I just went up there and was like, don't airball this <laughs> shit. Damn. Shit, 67% maybe? Shit, that's hand. with the offhand, though. That's crazy. No, that's that's crazy. good, though. Wow. How was that matchup against Florida, though, in that championship game? Who was y'all toughest? Who was the toughest matchup, you think? Was it Al Horford or Corey Brewer? Joe Kim Noah, yeah. too, was on that squad. Well, it was Al Horford, Corey Brewer, Joe Kim Noah. Little guard. Torian too. Green. They had a uh, Chris Richards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maurice Spates, yeah. and Spates. then somebody else, I want to say, that got drafted or played on the NBA team. But shit. I yeah, mean, I had a whip, too. Nah, y'all had a whip, too. Jude, Daquan, uh, Mike. Mike, Ron Lewis. Shout out to Daquan Mark Cook. Butler. What was 33 name? I forgot his name. The shooter that y'all had. Damn. Daquan Cook? Nah, outside of Daquan, who else was on the team? Ron Lewis. Ron Lewis. Yeah. Ron Lewis, who hit the shot against Xavier. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Othello Hunter. Othello. Matt yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, y'all was in Atlanta yeah, together. Yeah, I played yep. in Atlanta. Yes, yep. sir. That's my guy. O played a long time, man. Overseas, we yep. were seeing him, man. Big fan of old man. Yeah. Crazy as hell. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, he wild sure. boy. And so, obviously, you know, y'all went crazy, <clears throat> came up short in the national championship, but you ended up being the number one pick that summer. How was that summer for you going from Ohio State to being the number one pick? Like, obviously, he was always highly recruited, always talented, but to be official the number one pick, like, 
how was that process for you? It was a whirlwind. Uh, shit, just going through the draft process and everything you got to do, especially knowing you could be one or two. Um, just always doing interviews, just going here and there, never really getting the time to yourself to sit down. But I, I remember uh, at draft, like right you know, after we got called, I remember running to Joe Kim. He was like, Gio, we going to turn up in the city. Where are we going? Portland was like, yeah, you got an hour to say bye to your family. We got a jet. We got a whole parade set up for you the next day. So I will say I missed out on my turn up night with all the draftees in New York. But that parade in Portland and being the number one pick and, and seeing everything in that city, um, what could have been um, – was definitely an experience I will never forget for and sure. so thankful for because it, it changed my life. For sure. And obviously, <clears throat> that Portland team, obviously, we're going you plan, you know what I'm saying, despite the injuries. Y'all had some really talented people on that team. Y'all definitely like one of the wonderful teams. How was it to play with like a Lamarcus Aldridge and to have a Brandon Roy in your squad? Because y'all all were super talented. Yes, we was just super young and I rarely got to play with them. You know, <laughs> y'all only played like 76 games, I read together damn near it might have been years. 72 for real yeah um but those dudes were so talented you know brandon roy always walking in what up greg odin he never just called me greg he always had to say my full name that's my guy and lamarcus man just with one of the most unstoppable games mm -hmm. so either you're gonna stop me going to this hook yeah. or i'm gonna do this turn around jay he was just so smooth and uh you know i, I really wish i was healthy enough to be able to help Build what Portland had, man. We we had some guys coming in, the Steve Blakes, the uh, Andre Millers, uh, Gerald Wallace. Is you know it was uh, hey, hello OGs. No, we did get a hey, lot hello, of OGs. OGs, but that was necessary back then, though. Yeah, yeah, man. Playing with Marcus Canby, Joe Prisbilla. Damn, you know, those some names right there. Hey, yeah. man, dude, I, I learned a lot. I just wish I was out on the floor. When, I, uh, I seen an interview with Brandon Roy. He was talking about how when you first got there, you was just dominating. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it was so impressive to see you. Like, he was like, I knew I was going to win two or three championships with him. He was so good. And it just took me back to, like, you in high school and seeing you in AAU. I'm like, bro, he was so dominant. So I knew what he was talking about. You, you was the man. Like, everybody around here know you. We know how dominant you were. So yeah. the injuries suck. It's, it's part of the game. But, yeah. yeah, you definitely was one of them dominant guys for sure. Dog. I appreciate you, that. You was on the cover of College Hoops. Like, I know college football coming back this year. Niggas is geeked about that. But you was on the cover of one of the best basketball games ever. Mm -hmm. How was that? And did you get paid for that? I – did I get paid for that? Uh, no, oh. I think I took the honor. Just, Man, I wish I was your on, agent on. in fucking college, Greg. This nigga was Christmas I, I had no agent in college, man. Oh, man. <laughs> man, tap in. And all your kids, I got y'all. I mean, you know, just being able to look back at that. I mean, no, I think it was the last, maybe one of the, the second to last, like, college, you know, putting college players on, the, mm -hmm. you know. So, it, it was it was nice. Have that you gone picture, back I got and it seen, hanging up. Have you gone back and see what we look like in them games? No. The somebody crazy. Somebody <laughs> randomly, like, Instagram me with them. I was bad, boy. <laughs> nah, homie did a reel of all of your graphics from like college to Ooh, 2K. Weak. Oh, them first 2K graphics is crazy. <laughs> and they had a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of this shit, bro. <laughs> wow, what Why made you? I know we interviewing Greg. What made your lame ass get a mohawk? <laughs> Bitch, you was up. <laughs> Why you getting a mohawk? <laughs> Corny ass nigga. <laughs> Y'all laughing at this shit? I it was that I was I was, was living in a, I was living in Atlanta, bro. And he got to die. I ain't get that shit died, nigga. <laughs> I was real nigga. I ain't get it died. But I did ask for a design on the side. Oh shit! <laughs> Hell no. Obviously, y'all played each other in high school. How was that? Did y'all catch any games each other in, in the pros? Yeah, I got to play against Greg. Uh, every time he walked up to me, he like, how the hell you get to Atlanta? I'm in Portland. He would say it to me every single time I seen him. I'm like, shit, I can't get in the game. Fuck being in Atlanta. Yeah. How I'm going to get in? <laughs> nah. hey, I, I used to hate. I ain't going to lie. It, it was you and Al Horford, man. And after that was in the Sierra video, I was hating. Every time I seen y'all, I was like, man, what's well, good, man? I was hating, too. <laughs> I want to be worried about playing time. I'm here. worried about oh. partying and shit. I'm injured, man. I got free time on my hands. What's going Goodies on? Goodies was a nice video. <laughs>
spectacular. Back in the day. <laughs> how was that, though, watching Brandon Roy hoop? Because he got stopped. His career got stopped with injuries, too, man. How was that? We talked about him before on the show. I think Joe Johnson was better, personally. But Brandon Roy was a dog, for sure. Uh, I mean, they both really good. But Brandon, it was just so natural to him. That's yeah. why mm -hmm. out there in Portland, they gave him the nickname, the natural man. Like, he would just do things that you just – Nobody was even thinking of, you know. Yeah. He, he just, I mean, a lot of guys from that Seattle area got game like that. They can just score, man. They just bucket getters. Right. And it was just such a good dude, you know. I, I wish he could have played a little longer as well, For man. Sure. Um, so talented, man. And, and he carried, you know, the teams we did have. It wasn't a long time. Yeah. But, you know, he, he was – he just did things, man. Sometimes I find myself going back and watching Brandon Roy's top ten plays on YouTube. Hey, man, that boy was cold. No, nah, he was cold. He was definitely cold. Sure. He was right behind Kobe if he didn't get hurt, mm -hmm. though. Nah, he was like that. No, nah, I he love was. Brandon Roy's game. You putting him right behind Kobe is crazy. Pause. I mean, but he was like. Yeah, that's pause. Yeah, bro. he. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. Chill That's out, crazy. bro. That was crazy. That was crazy, bro. Let's move on. Okay. You're doing a lot. <laughs> okay, my bad. You're doing a lot today. Okay, I am. Let me chill. Hey, you may not have got to Atlanta, but you definitely got to play in Miami. I did. Oh, my bad. I did. Um, it was one year, LeBron's last year, and, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot basketball-wise and off-the-court-wise just with being with all those Hall of Famers and great players for a long time. Um, and then basketball-wise, man, I, I never seen basketball at that level. I mean, basically you were seeing guys playing at the top of their game, and we talking yeah. about Hall of Famers playing at the top of their game. Man. Yeah. And, yeah. and I will say to me, LeBron James is the best player to play the game, even though I, I love Jordan, I love Shaq, and I think Will Chamberlain is the man. But watching Bron do it, like out there, like watching him get 63 points in the game and – I'm getting four points, playing 16 minutes, tired as hell, game over. He dancing around, and I'm about to die. My leg about to fall off off of 16 minutes. Like, the man just had crazy energy, man. And I'm, that, that year in Miami was, was good. And I didn't go out that much because I knew I didn't want to get in trouble. So I told myself I could have one cheap meal, and I can't go to South Beach oh, damn you. until the end of the season. Oh, you was locked in. Oh, yeah. Couldn't have been me. <laughs> Boy, it was outside, ain't it? <laughs> Booby trap. <laughs> Live on Sunday. You better know it. I would have hung my jersey up for real. Freaky T. <laughs> nah, bro, that's Mike. Don't do that, bro. Man, don't try to add my name, bro. Don't so what's up with your charities now? What charities you working with now? So the first one um, right now, coaching at Butler, mm -hmm. a big charity is called A Kid Again. Um, it, it's throughout the country, but basically a kid again. They provide adventures for families that have kids dealing with life-threatening illnesses. Mm -hmm. So basically something for all, the f whole family is just to get their mind off of being in the hospital and dealing with whatever illness that is. So a kid again is it, a great organization right here in the city. The Colts mess with it, the Pacers mess with it, Butler messes with it. Um, so if you all want to check that out, it, or if you have people who are dealing with life-threatening illnesses and just need something, need a, a community, um, you guys should look them up. Oh, that's dope, bro. What made you get into coaching? Uh, honestly, I just kind of fell into it, um, just trying to be around basketball. You know, when, yeah. when my career, it was basically taken away from me with all the injuries. So. Um, just trying to be around the game. Went back to Ohio State to get my uh, bachelor's degree. Salute. And, um, you know, just was going to practices every day. And then I just figured, you know, I got a lot to offer some of these young kids. Yeah. Uh, I know the game. I got experience in life and the ups and downs of being a pro. Um, play college at the highest level. So it's something that I kind of just pursued. You talk about coaching. Could you have ever seen him being a high school coach? Knowing him as long as you know him? I think so. I think so. Because <laughs> you might these, be the kids, only one. <laughs> these kids need it this, these days, man. Honestly, you, you need somebody like him that's going to go out there and, and who's going to show them and probably cross them over and cuss them out at the same time because they really do not listen these days. You nah, need that's somebody that, that's proven an mm -hmm. NBA champion that can go out there and tell them, you know what they need to do to get to that level. So I'm going to go ahead and give him and his props uh, as the it. NBA champion he is. Appreciate, appreciate that. It. I think they took my ring back, though. 
Yeah, they took my ring back. The Bucks fans beat up. <laughs> they told hey, me. <laughs> you see that? He's, yeah, I did. They don't fuck with you. <laughs> but he said he still got to deal with parents, bro, at the college level. I would imagine. I That's mean, there's a lot of money being thrown around now. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't feel like your son in the best situation, they're probably going to complain a little bit. You know what I mean? But it's, it's a tough environment right now. You think that hurt the game, G? Uh, I don't. What, you talking about NIL? Yeah, NIL. Uh, no, because the players should have been getting paid a long time ago. I just think it needs to, to have a, a cap on it. Because uh, right now, it's kind of the have and have nots. You yeah. know, the big schools can just, you can throw 500000 at a player that's going to be your 12th man, you know, out of Kansas, when this kid can be your best player and the most you can give him is 200000 at a small school. Gotcha. So it's just, you know, and then the transfer portal is going to add to that because you got all these good kids going and sitting on the bench at a big school, and then they're going to transfer. They don't go somewhere else. Maybe a smaller school that didn't recruit them. They're going to dominate. So now another big school comes in saying you can be the man. So now they transfer mm-hmm. again. And then another thing that's happening is these kids ain't finishing out their spring, they spring term. So now mm-hmm. they're dropping out of school early and then trying to catch up. So a lot of them are not going to finish their degree. Gotcha. And another thing, they don't get any financial education. Like, all these kids at a young age are getting all this money, and nobody is really telling them what to do. You know, a lot of these kids are paying agents 20%. Uh, Lee. I mean, like in the NBA, <laughs> like in the NBA, you're only paying like 3 3 4%. Like, and a lot of these kids, or even the parents, or even the families from where these kids coming from don't even know. So nah, that's it's, it's going to be a lot. So in the long run, I think it is going to hurt the game until we get some cap on it. So now, yeah. I remember you came to talk to us in the NBA. Uh, mm-hmm. You came to Minnesota. Yeah. I was in Minnesota, and you came up and told us about your experience when it came to financial stuff. And um, you doing that and sharing that kind of info with the kids, man, is big because right now it is an environment where everybody is just getting a lot of money, buying scat packs and all type of stuff. Right. And um, that money can last them and give them a really good head start on life. Mm-hmm. But I don't think they see it yet because everybody thinks they go into the NBA. So you saying that is big. Sure. Yeah, um, I've been working with this company, Educore, um, for about four years now and just teaching financial literacy to athletes and entertainers. And we're moving to the college, but we're also still doing professional athletes and entertainers. And um, it, it's definitely a lot. It's definitely needed. And, uh, you know, when I was going to talk, I, I had a lot of horror stories. So I kind of come in as a, you know, an a ex-athlete that can kind of tell these guys to, you know, basically be better with their money. Don't do what I did. And yeah. I, I'll just say, I, I like to tell this one story. It was like, you know, when you was young, you was getting your checks. You knew it was coming. It was being direct deposited. And all I knew was that my money was on my card and I can get whatever I wanted off my debit card at any time. Yeah. And it was going to be there next month. Well, shit, I'm in the club one day and that credit card didn't work. And it's like 1.30 in the morning, and it's to the point where I wasn't as engaged with my financial people. So I didn't even know who to call. Like, if I was going to call the back of the car, I wouldn't even know my own security number to even verify myself because yeah. I just had people handling that for me. So the biggest thing uh, we like to say in the financial literacy is as the person who's making the money, be as engaged. Know where your money's coming from and where it's going. Know who it, who the people are that's handling your money because you don't want to be stuck in a club like me emailing the financial guy in California and it's Ooh, two tough. in the morning, you know. Did he hit you back? No. Ooh, that's tough. That happened to me at Louis Vuitton one time. I was in there trying to purchase something for, for, one, for P. I almost say P. So I was trying to purchase something for P. Trickaroo. Trickery. <laughs> Why did he get this? And my car, decli- my car declined. I was at a letter. I was at the store called Jeffrey's. My car declined. I leave because <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I go to the bank. I go get like twenty thousand. I'm like motherfucker. I got it, motherfucker. I'm playing with me. <laughs> I'm buying stuff I ain't want. That's stupid shit, but that happened to me too. Now nah, kids need them stories though, nah, bro. Nah, for sure. Especially like you said with the transfer portal, the NIL is so crazy is that they can have these agreements for money, but they don't have to fulfill them because there's nothing back in those situations. Like mm-hmm. bigger companies, you can do that, but it's so many horror stories of kids that in transfer places promises money, but they ain't perform like they were supposed to perform, and they ain't get that bread. But you can't sue nobody 
for that shit. And I think that's the most important thing going forward is to way to protect these kids growing up now. Yes, yeah, a lot of money thrown in their face, but none of this shit is actually like solidified yet. So y'all having a company is saving a lot of people. Yeah, and another thing on, on, on that is, well, if you're gonna come in and say, I need my money guaranteed, then we gonna come in and say, well, then I need 15 points a game. Whew. And then that's gonna start messing with it again, so. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Get rid of the NIL though, bro. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, you tripping. You, you tripping. Get rid of it, bro. Nah, I, I need to get paid. You get paid. I'm saying, though, like he said, I, well, I'm not going to say get rid of it, but put a cap on it like he said, though, bro, because a lot of these kids don't be worth that what they getting, for real. That's hate. Let me That's get my bag. No, get paid, but I'm saying, though, bro, a lot of kids be cold at a small school, and like he said, a dude could be the 12th man on Kansas getting 500 bands. I ain't counting nobody's bread. I'm just saying, like, spread the money so it's not as – Sienna can't compete with Duke. You know what I'm saying? With the NIL. So that's why it's tough. For sure. Fuck it. If, I'm, if I know I ain't going to the league, I'm getting the biggest bag I can out the gate. I go, I go ride the bench. Respect, bro. We can move on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into my spiel, bro. We can. <laughs> now go ahead. You at home. You can do it. Nah, we good. For sure. All right, Greg, I got to ask you, what's the best team you've ever been on? Uh, the Miami Heat team. Oh, is that easy? 2013, 2014, I mean, we made it to the NBA Finals. Not gonna lie. I think you out of pocket saying Bron better than Jordan, though. Oh, no, 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 no. Nah. I, I, I grew up with Jordan. I'm saying the person I've literally seen with my own eyes do it. So that's when I go, Bron is my GOAT because I've actually seen it. Now, I grew up on Jordan. I love Jordan. I think he's the greatest thing like everybody else. Like, I would tell my daughter, Michael Jordan, but for me personally, it's LeBron because I've seen him do stuff that, like, I ain't think was possible. Nah, LeBron Cole, he, the, he, he probably is, he like 1A, and Michael Jordan, like, not in the system. <laughs> like, he by himself because, like, MJ, everybody wanted to be MJ. Not everybody want to be Bron. Like, that's uh... – not everybody want to be Bron, bro. Like we still you. look. You look in the crowd right now. It's Jordans <laughs> everywhere. Like everybody wear Jordans. Everybody still want to be Jordans. I got Jordans on. I don't know what the fuck you got on, but everybody that boy still showing his ass today. <laughs> my fault. My fault. <laughs> boy showing his ass. I got you, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> he the ice door and basket door. <laughs> oh, I ain't even up. see the brand. <laughs> He ain't been labeled up in a minute. Ah, Look at Darrell. Yeah. Yeah. Darrell got that 360 deal, man. <laughs> Shout out to my nigga Darrell. <laughs> I don't, but I think on the court, though, it's kind of hard to be like LeBron James. That's what he's saying. Like yeah. You don't train your kid to be like a LeBron because he's definitely a once-in-a-lifetime type of talent. He's saying influential-wise, Jordan is more impactful. You can, I would say that. More relatable. Yeah. You know I what I mean? That. As a big man, I got to ask you, how you feel about Jokic running the NBA right now? I'm proud of it. Uh, Jokic is, uh, me and Jeff was talking, he got that game that he's going to play if he wanted to for 25 years and could mm -hmm. still dominate as long as he can move, man. Um, his, his IQ of the game and just the things he can do with his body and lack of athleticism mm -hmm. um, is it, just amazing. And uh, I think a lot of these kids coming up need to take notice of the skill and just the IQ of the game to be that type of dominant player, not just being athletic is going to get you there. For sure. All right, before we get out of here, obviously I know who you're taking in that Timberwolves Nuggets, mm -hmm. but who you got tomorrow game seven, Pacers, Knicks? I got Pacers. My nigga. Jokes. <laughs> Jokes. My nigga. Knicks and seven, bro. I got Jalen Brunson. Well, I'm, I've been saying I think the Knicks are the better team, technically. No, but you're not supposed to say I, that on the microphone, Greg. I am uh, I'm, I'm all in on the Pacers right now, man. I, I like the I really Pacers. Am. I don't. But the guard, playing at the guard in game seven. Got, right now, I think the Knicks is just too banged up for me to see them. But that crowd going to be crazy. You know how the atmosphere yeah. is. Yeah. A lot of people shrink in them kind of environments. Man. Yeah. It's going to be New York. All of them seven. in New York. And that's I know they did <laughs> some yesterday. They went to some bar or something. Yeah. It's over with, bro. Yeah, it's over. You know my motto. Miles Turner, Tina Turner, Brittany Turner, Nixon 7, bro. <laughs>
No, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Knicks and seven. Is OG back? Nah. Don't matter. Damn. Patrick's and seven. I heard you talking about Madison Square Garden. I got to ask, what's one of the most craziest environments you played a basketball game in? Uh, Michigan State, man. Michigan State. I, we went out and we was warming up before the game, and it got quiet. And them went, Greg, how was World War II? <laughs> Damn. I'm 19 at the time. I was like, <laughs> Nigga, you on, look cut. 30. <laughs> I didn't know how you look. <laughs> Hey, so nobody said nothing on my team, and I respect them for it. But when we went in the back, I was like, hey, did y'all hear what the f they said about Greg? I, I ain't gonna lie. I used to be like, yo, y'all gotta get his birth certificate, bro. <laughs> bro, damn, they're one of the Africans, bro. <laughs> yeah, you said Greg's a real Pascal. <laughs> He, he told him an African is crazy. <laughs> you know that he's No, to my face is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's crazy. Oh, man, my fault. I'm wild my bad. Disrespectful. Nah, I, I look at it like this. They told me when I was uh, 16, I looked 35. When Thanks. I was 21, I looked 35. <laughs> I'm 36 right now. You look and 50. Hopefully, when I'm 50, <laughs> you look 35. I look 45. Oh. <laughs> you got braids, so I can't, I, I can't do them no more. So, <laughs> shout out to you. You wait, Asian. Wait, oh. That you don't know ain't have his braids before he cut them off. You know, I'm, 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 Is that just, why I'm you... just in my little space right here. Before oh, okay. I, yeah, you I going to go cut back. them hoes off. Hey. Hey. <laughs> them crazy. The real last dance. <laughs> hey, you know what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's crazy. Hey, I'm going to start heating the guests up. <laughs> That's our dog. I know. He, 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 he at home. He at home. Hey, Jeff, you got to bring back the pike braids. Boy, this, this shit barely hanging on. <laughs> hey, this is, this, this is a shout out to you. No. Oh, oh, he had you. The real lineage. <laughs> My shit's were like Nipsey, bro. Don't do that. Oh, You didn't have the long time. I had hang I, time, bro. Nah, I got the Devin William hang time. Yeah, I told okay. you it was a shout out to the That's what they get before they put that soul in there. <laughs> <laughs> who, who got the soul in there? <laughs> yes, Huh. Man, we out here. <laughs> hey, we appreciate y'all, man. Y'all been a great crowd. Gio, appreciate you pulling up, my for boy. Sure, for sure, bro. Yeah, Strict about to get a party back rocking. You know what I'm saying? We got food over here. The bar is back open. Food vendors back open. Enjoy yourselves. Have a good time. Turn this bitch up. We appreciate y'all rocking with us.